side for indies where we're raising money in particular for the bookseller but also to raise awareness about all of the financial upheaval that's happening for independent bookstores. Some inspirational quotes near me when I work. This one here I wrote to remind me of how much certain writers write. 2,000 words a day for Arthur Golden, 3,000 words a day for Thomas Walsh. John Irving was 36 years old when The World According to Garp, his fourth novel, was published. I'm 54 now, so... You have a lot of authors who may have paintings on the wall to give them inspiration, but me, I look at time. Dates, that is my inspiration. So if you'll notice, you'll see throughout March, Corona quarantine, April, Corona quarantine, May, Corona quarantine, but I did not allow us being quarantined to take my uh, focus away from the subject. I've been working on my next book, New York, New York, New York, for about seven years now, and it is handed in and coming out next spring, so you've caught me in um, a relatively clean part of the process. And, as many writers are, um, really uh, bound by journals, uh, and journals um, help me to sketch my ideas. I know some writers will do uh, longhand versions of their manuscripts. I do not, but this is a place where I organize, I brainstorm, um, I do my plot outlines, I collect research. I'm Rachel Dwoskin. I'm a writer in Chicago. This is my current workspace. It is the windowsill in my bedroom. And behind me is the Field Museum, which is closed, and Soldier Field, which is empty and Lakeshore Drive, which is quiet because people are staying home and keeping each other this safe. It's actually something I drew, actually. It's a summary of the film E.T. Um, so I, it's, it's kind of weird to have your own artwork on the walls, but um, for something about this, I don't know, some kind of nostalgic, weird thing I've got going on, I have that on the wall, too. I just took it down now, so now I don't have it on so, the wall. So good morning, book lovers. Thank you for joining us this morning, and welcome. I'm James Finn Garner. I'll be your host this morning for a special Inside for Indies Independent Bookstore celebration. Uh, those clips there, I'll explain in a second. Um, wasn't, it, wasn't it nice that Toniel had the pandemic ending in May? That's such a great idea. Um, so we are uh, meeting this morning uh, with five booksellers around the Chicagoland area. Um, to celebrate Independent Bookstore Day. And we'll also have a reading from a favorite poet, Fasil Muhayyadeen. I wanna thank Don Evans and the Chicago Literary Hall of Fame for arranging this morning's events. Last year, we couldn't have Independent Bookstore Day, at least not in person. We didn't have our prizes, uh, parties or scavenger hunts. Um, and we thought, well, this will just, this will just be a little blip in the, in the year. We'll be back in full swing in the summer. But as time went on, uh, last year I spoke with some booksellers and they were a little concerned about uh, the lockdown. They were concerned they wouldn't be able to financially keep going. Um, and they were very worried about it. So I reached out to uh, some writer friends and asked them, you know, everyone is, everyone is shut down in their house. Can you take a video of yourself in your workspace? Uh, the, the things on the wall, the things that motivate you, the pictures, the, uh, the tchotchkes, uh, and show people how you work. And uh, with these videos, we can highlight the importance uh, of independent bookstores and the trials they're going through. We ended up getting about 40 writers uh, sending videos in for Insight for Indies. Uh, and you saw the highlights from a couple of them. Um, we had writers nationwide, some in Florida, uh, Scott Simon from Washington, DC. Um, and this year, Don wanted to do an update of that uh, project. So instead of meeting the writers, we're going to meet the booksellers, hear their stories, uh, talk about their opinions and their hopes of the future and what they're going to do today for Independent Bookstore Day. Um, thank you all for joining us again. There's a poll at the bottom of your screen that I'd like you uh, at your leisure to check out and, uh, and let us know what you plan to do when bookstores open again down at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And uh, we'll, we'll announce the results a little bit later. Um, and let's go to our book, first bookseller on the north side of Chicago in Andersonville. Women and Children First is a landmark store in that neighborhood. 
Part of its mission statements reads, women and children first, wait, I've got to change my video. Wait, watch this. I learned how to do this. I meant to do it more sleekly. There we go. Awesome. Women and children first. So uh, I'm gonna read part of their mission statement. Women and children first believes in the transformative power of literature. As intersectional trans inclusive feminists, we believe books are tools for liberation. Since 1979, we have celebrated and amplified underrepresented voices. We hope to realize our dream of an inclusive feminist future. They have continued to have virtual book events all through this past year. Uh, also their, their in-store book groups and weekly story time, which we hope will be resurrected soon. Through book selling, organizing and advocacy, they have worked to make Chicago a better place for everyone. Would you please welcome co-owner of Women and Children First, Sarah Hollenbeck. Good morning, happy Independent Bookstore Day. <gasps> Um, so thank you so much for that beautiful intro. We are Women and Children First. We are Chicago's only feminist bookstore. <laughs> um, today we are so happy to have our doors open um, for Independent Bookstore Day. Um, we were closed through most of 2020. Um, and we, you know, it was a very difficult year for us. We were so humbled by the support. We honestly didn't think we were gonna survive uh, 2020 once we closed our doors. When, when we made that decision, uh, we really, uh, you know, had only had a fraction of online order sales and the community rose to the occasion in a staggering show of support. And our online orders went up over 200% um, during 2020 and we survived. Uh, and we are happily now reopen and allowing in-store browsing. So our, the community support was, you know, something that I also attribute to our co-founders, um, Anne and Linda who opened the store in 1979 in a different location, um, but still with the same mission. Uh, the legend has it that when the store opened, you know, it was almost all books by and about women. Uh, the, the legend is there was one shelf that had uh, books by men we like, and that was it. The rest was all women authors. Um, since then, we've uh, evolved. We are still a feminist bookstore, but we uh, have books by uh, authors of all genders. We have Faisal's books, who's going to be joining us later today, um, and, and lots of folks across the gender spectrum who still um, identify as feminists, celebrate feminism, and uphold our mission. Um, so still continuing the work, still evolving along with uh, the feminist movement. Um, today, we are so excited for Independent Bookstore Day. We have some stuff going on. Um, Linda, our co-founder, will be back um, to do a story time outdoors at 11.30. So if you're in Andersonville, we hope you'll join us outside for a safe uh, distance uh, story time. This will be our first uh, in-person story time since 2019. So we're really delighted to have that happening. Um, and then at noon, um, a bunch of young activists called Bake Sale for Justice will uh, be here. Uh, they've baked a ton of treats and they are gonna sell them to all of you um, to raise money for Brave Space Alliance. Uh, Brave Space Alliance is an amazing um, organization on the south side of Chicago, trans-led, black-led, um, fighting for advocacy for the trans community. So we hope um, you'll come out and support the Excel for Justice. We also have this awesome deal where if you spend uh, $50 today in the store, you get this cool independent bookstore day tote. Um, and if you spend $100 today, you get to fill this tote 
with a bunch of advanced reading copies of your choice. So books that haven't even been pub published yet, you can fill the, this bag with, with those books. So a bunch of cool stuff um, happening here at Women and Children First in the Andersonville neighborhood. So you are not letting this slow you down. You're having independent bookstore day yeah. as usual. As usual, we still have limited capacity. We're only allowing a few people in the store at a time. Um, but otherwise we are open for business and we're so, it is so wonderful to put books in people's hands instead of shipping them out. I can't tell you what a joy it is um, to talk to people about books face to face, even if we all have masks on. <laughs> um, it's been honestly uh, very emotional to reopen and reconnect with some of our favorite people in the world. <laughs> when did you reopen? What dates roughly? Um, we reopened early March, so oh, yeah, we opened last summer, so we are open all of last summer, and then we are closed in um, uh, the fall when the numbers, our threshold was a 10% positivity rate meant that we would close our doors, so we closed our doors when that happened, and you know, it was really a difficult holiday, it was a very difficult holiday. Yes, well, we're, we are through the winter, thankfully, mm -hmm. and the holiday, and I hope we're all inspired and refreshed from spring and going to go out and support our local stores. Yeah. So, thanks for the visit. Thank you so much. I hope to see some of you today. Excellent. <laughs> so from Andersonville, uh, where Sarah's going to actually go out and be the retail person that she is. From Andersonville, we're going to move to uh, the west suburbs, to Forest Park, specifically 7419 West Madison in Forest Park to visit the legendary store Centuries and Sleuths. Uh, it's been there for 30 years. They, they hold book discussions on history, mysteries, and even G.K. Chesterton. It generally is the meeting place for the group Sisters in Crime Chicago. And it's a great place for book suggestions, cozy reading, and maybe a little arsenic to drop into the Vicar's tea. So I'd, like to uh, introduce or welcome Don Evans and the bookstore owner, Augie Alexi. Thanks, Jim. Uh, I'm outside the store right now. I just wanted to give you a look. Uh, we're on Madison Street in Forest Park. And uh, I'm just gonna walk inside and show you the store a little bit. Now I'm gonna let um, Augie and Tracy tell you a little bit about the store. Um, I've been here for well, about an hour now, and they've had a pretty good little crowd coming and going, socially distanced and safe. But you can see it's a beautiful place, and obviously they specialize in mystery novels and Chicago and history. Beautiful store, nice little space. And um, today on Independent Bookstore Day, I have made my first couple purchases. And because I made these purchases, I am entitled to, let's see if I can get it here. Pick from this rack here, John's in the background here, but there's a whole rack of stuff, um, t-shirts. I wanna get a face mask because I spent $53. So I can get either a face mask, I can get a t-shirt, I can get books. I got my pick, but I got plenty of tote bags for now. <laughs> So I'm gonna do that. Uh, Augie right now is in the middle of helping a customer. And so hopefully he'll be ready to join us in just a minute. Uh, where's Tracy, John? Uh, I'm, gonna try to, I'm gonna try to get Tracy <laughs> out here. I'm trying to get the, uh, the owners, uh, Augie and Tracy uh, here for a minute. Um, and so um, Tracy, you wanna tell us a little bit about the free giveaways? Uh, Tracy is going to come and join us, and then Augie will tell us a little bit more about the store. So here is Tracy. Hi there. We are <laughs> honored and grateful to be among the five stores your Indies, uh, Inside Indies are interviewing today. Um, these are um, gifts with purchase, and they're sort of... Um, uh, modulated by the uh, size of the purchase. 
And so they go all the way from bags and t-shirts to uh, water bottles or commuter cups to books and heavy duty magnets, like see with the campground. <laughs> uh, as is typical with these, they are associated, most of them are associated with books. Um, and some of you, some people might recognize the Love Your Bookstore shirt. Uh, that was a campaign before. These come in the usual sizes, extra large down to small. Um, Excellent. I'm going to pick out my thing. I might actually buy another book because I want to get, <laughs> I want to get a face mask and I want to get well, you can a get t-shirt. Buttons or the pins over there. For free. There's a free uh, yeah. little thing of pins. So now this is Augie Alexi. Oh, so wow. Augie um, is uh, here. Make sure you're in screen here. Can you see yourself? Yep. <laughs> well, thanks for making me be part of this. I really enjoy being a bookseller and associated um, with like-minded uh, owners too. Um, we just celebrated our 30th anniversary, November of last year. Uh, we're currently, we're in Forest Park. The first 10 years were in Oak Park and we moved here in the year 2000. We have a variety of activities that make it more than a bookstore. In fact, one customer referred to it as a cultural center because we have discussion groups, uh, we've had quite a, quite a few uh, local authors and international authors. We've had Sir Peter Ustinov, uh, uh, Steve Allen, uh, Sir John Keegan, but we've had Sarah Poretsky. Um, Don Evans. Don, Don <laughs> Evans. <laughs> and uh, Lori Radar Day. Um, so we've had, um, and then there's Jack Fredrickson and Bob Goldsboro. I know I'm going to offend somebody, but... Uh, again, we're very fortunate in the loyalty of our uh, booksellers, or not booksellers, our authors, and who fortunately are good customers too. Um, the store is specializing, or we specialize in history and mystery books. Now, the reason for that is my selfish interest. I didn't want to open up just a general bookstore. I had an interest in history and mystery, and I thought I could do better with that. I did a survey. Um, with a 3,000 piece mailing to uh, uh, Oak Park in uh, River Forest, both uh, individual uh, apartment, uh, individual buildings and uh, 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 homes and apartments. And I got an 85, 16% uh, uh, response, which is pretty good. Well, enough for the technical stuff, but again, uh, the mystery discussion group has actually put on performances uh, that have been written by members of the of the group and also been performed by them. And also we've had a meeting of minds comparable, well, not comparable, but copied a lot of the ideas from Steve Allen's program in the 1970s. Um, again, we have a section with history. It starts with ancient times and the shelves are labeled. And we also have women's biographies, men's biographies. And on the American side, we start with true crime. And we have a general history and we have a Chicago history section, annotated books and puzzles. And then we have titles from our history discussion group, our mystery discussion group and uh, military history and then kids books in history and mystery. Now all the books on the shelf are full price, but we do have $5 bundles of books, $3 paperbacks and $7 hardbounds. And those topics could be more than just history and mystery. They could be science, gardening. law, gardening, whatever. I don't, I've got, I can keep on going forever. <laughs> I thought Jim might have a, a question for you and then uh, we'll, we'll keep moving. Uh, I just want to know how the foot traffic is on Madison Avenue or Madison it's Street. pretty good. We've had our losses because of COVID primarily in, in the restaurant area, but we're going and we've got a wonderful chamber of commerce that, you know, really cares about the individual uh, businesses and their owners. So, um, <clears throat> It's it's improving, especially um, the last couple of weeks uh, with things maybe coming under better control with COVID. And even too, through the um, 20, um, 2020 was 
a better year for me in terms well, in terms of sales or whatever uh, than 2019. And there was nothing in 2019 except signings and this where we didn't have that in 2020. So I based it on the loyalty of my customers. Also, I did a lot of um, website sales, which was due to being part of uh, indie, uh, indie Commerce, which is uh, a part of the American Booksellers Association. So I want to so thank you we, for- We survived um, and well. You, rec you recommended um, a lot of books to me last December, including the CAD file books for my daughter and, um, and Richard Kerr's Nazi mysteries, because of course, I'm a middle-aged man. I have to read about Nazis all the time. <laughs> I have to read about Nazi Germany. It's what it is. Uh -huh. so, thank you, Keith. It's always good. You're such a jolly person to, to talk to and meet. Thank you very much for the tour of the store. And let me tell what, recommend one book for you. Uh, it's, we've done really well with sales on it too. And I've led our discussion group. It's Some Girls, Some Hats and Hitler. It's a memoir. Did I recommend that already to you? No, no, no. But it's a memoir of a woman who ex owned an exclusive hat shop on the main street in Vienna. Mm -hmm. And what she goes through, it's set in 38. Um, she's a very attractive woman, very intelligent woman, knows how to run a business. Only fallback is she's she's Jewish and has to deal with that. And I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> but it's just a, a firsthand view uh, of what, in this case, women had to go through through the crisis. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Augie shows ABC. I always be closing. I'm sorry. Um, now I'd like to, from, from the west side, down down to the loop. Uh, we'd like to take you on a slight visit to the Dial Bookstore, which is in the Fine Arts Building on the second floor next to Roosevelt University. It is named for the fabled American literary magazine. Uh, in its most popular iteration, the Dial Magazine was a modernist literary journal published from the Fine Arts Building, which also housed the Little Review and uh, offices of Frank Lloyd Wright. Today, the Dial Bookstore sells both new books and antique volumes, chapbooks and journals to uh, have kind of a living link with Chicago's literary past. Uh, Peter Hopkins and Heidi Chung uh, took over the shop in April, 2020, because as we know in the book business, timing is everything. So congratulations, welcome Peter. Uh, tell us a bit about the Dial Bookshop. Uh, thanks, Jim. Yeah, we picked a great time to get into the book business. We uh, took over the store from Aaron and Mary, who you may remember from uh, Wilson Community Books um, in April of 2020, like one week before everything got locked down. Um, <clears throat> so it's been it's been an interesting introduction. Uh, we are a predominantly used bookstore. We specialize in uh, fiction and sociology. Uh, got a, people, a couple of people in here today. So I'm gonna keep it uh, short and sweet, but I'm gonna tell a quick story about why we bought a bookstore. Um, <clears throat> I was friends with Aaron and Mary back when they ran Pilsen Community Books and they approached me about helping them build out a new store um, in the loop. And I ended up building all of the bookcases for them. And then a few years after that, I ended up meeting my wife here and we got married here and then they sold us the store. <laughs> and here we are. Um, we've been open since July with very limited capacity. Uh, and for Independent Bookstore Day, we are selling merchandise at 20% off. And I'm gonna keep it short here since we've got some shoppers in. So back to you, Jim. Yep. Once again, I'll always be closing to quote David Mamet. Um, thank you very much, Peter. We hope to get down there real soon and, and that beautiful space, all that light in there and everything. It's marvelous. Thank you for, thank you for the visit. Thank you. Uh, now we'd like to welcome uh, for the literary portion of the, today's event, Faisal Mohaideen. Faisal Mohaideen is the author of the poetry collection the Displaced Children of Displaced Children. Wait a minute, I gotta keep my whole, uh, I gotta choose my virtual background. This one, yes. The Displaced Children of Displaced Children, 
and also the chapbook, The Riddle of Longing. He teaches English at Highland Park High School and creative writing at Northwestern University. He also serves as a master practitioner for the global not-for-profit Narrative 4. Please welcome Faisal Muhayadeen. Uh, Jim, thank you so much. Um, I, I love that that's your background because I, I'm in my favorite workspace. I live in uh, Oak Park. I can actually show the, it's a drawing of mine. So I love to draw and it's a, a poem prayer that I wrote and then I, I drew it. Um, probably the piece I spent the most amount of time on. So I, I, am in, I live in Oak Park and I, I teach at, at Highland Park High School, like you said, and um, in Oak Park, I am, am in my, I have an old, we have an old home here. I, I'm in the attic, uh, which is like the quietest place in the house. So one thing I want to start by, like part of my workspace is um, earplugs. I have a, uh, an ear condition called hyperacusis where like regular sounds sound louder, they register more loudly. And it makes it really hard to be a teacher because there's like high schools are like just noise machines. And um, so when I'm working, earplugs are really important. Um, the attic is like the furthest away I can get. So all of, I love all the backgrounds that people have with books there. So like our bookshelves are downstairs and my desk here, all the books are like in front of me right now. So I can see them, no one else can see them. So, um, so I think that's, that's an important thing I wanted to share about me. Um, I love like writing for long stretches of time. I, I, have, I have a lot of trouble kind of going in and out. And so I will, I, I need to kind of just separate from people. So I, I used to go out to coffee shops or bookshops a lot to write, but obviously that's not possible anymore. Um, so this is the most isolated place I can get. Uh, some of the books I have around me, um, I, I always, when I'm writing poetry, I always need to have a ton of poetry books. And so if I get stuck or if I get lost or something, I'll open up like, you know, Mahmoud Darwish here, uh, Leah Umansky's The Barbarous Century, Hari Aluri's The Flayed City, and Lee Young Lee's Rose. And I'm just looking at, you know, Dark, Dark Thing by Ashley M. Jones. It's just certain books that I go back to and back to. The Essential Rumi is probably the number one. Um, so if I get stuck, I'll like open up a book and just start reading. Or I'll say, I need a word. I'm stuck on a word. And I'll just open a book up randomly, drop my finger down. I'm like, I'm going to use that word somehow in a poem. And it keeps things fresh or it helps me get unstuck. I love poetry broadside. So I have two um, signed, Mary Oliver's made my first po favorite poet. And so I have two like signed Mary Oliver broadsides that I keep next to me. I'm going to read one of them because I think the message um, that this one has is really important. Um, and it's from, from her book, Rules for the Dance. Some of you may know this quotation, but it's, uh, it says, no poet ever wrote a poem to dishonor life, to compromise high ideals, to scorn religious views, to demean hope or gratitude, to argue against tenderness, to place rancor before love, or to praise littleness soul, not one, not ever. On the contrary, poets have in freedom and in prison, in health and in misery, with listeners and without listeners, spent their lives examining and glorifying life, meditation, thoughtfulness, devoutness, and human love. They have done this wildly serenely, rhetorically, lyrically, without hope of answer or reward. They have done this grudgingly, willingly, patiently, and in the steams of impatience. They have done it for all in any of the gods of life, and the record of their so doing belongs to each one of us, including you. I love that poem. I love that excerpt. Um, when I think of the independent bookstores in and around Chicago, all over the place, I mean, it's a, it is a very often difficult and thankless. Obviously, there's a lot of gratitude that we're giving them, but a lot of people don't, don't give them the, the love and gratitude and recognition they deserve. I know Sarah's here from Women and Children First. I had one of my two book launches for my book there in 2018. And I remember just reaching out. I'm like, I love your store. I come there all the time. I, I lived in Evanston for a long time. 
And um, it was one of the stores I would go to often. And they wrote back and said, yes, we would love to host a book launch for you. And I, I, I've always been really grateful to them. Uh, the books, the book stall in Winnetka, I did my other book launch over there. So because I teach in Highland Park, that's a close bookstore. I'm in Oak Park, so the, the book table here, seminary, bookseller, volume, city lit, which sadly we had to say goodbye to. Uh, I, I have not been to Centuries and Sleuths, so that's the next bookstore I'm going to visit. So Augie, I'm excited to meet you there. Uh, Bookends and Beginnings in Evanston. I mean, all these places have been really good to authors, and I think that um, the program that we're doing today, especially post as we're like winding out, hopefully, of COVID, is a testament to like how strong these bookstores are, but how much they need us and all of us. And I, I just want to thank all of you who are here. Thank all the bookstores. I know R Roberta, who we're going to hear from, she, the book, the book stall is 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 your. I mean, I think you're the like the the brilliance behind the legacy of uh, the book stall. So thank you, Roberta, as well for being here and. And Don, thank you for inviting me. I did have a poem I wanted to read, just my own. So I'll do that. It's a short poem called The Forgotten Banana. And I was thinking about, um, Tim O'Brien has a, at the end of The Things They Carried, he talks about a book that's on the bookshelf that isn't read and how in order for books to, to stay alive, we need to read them. And I'm thinking the same of places where books are. So the fact that bookstores are opening again, um, it's, it's amazing for the books, for the stores. So this is a forgotten banana. It's the point of view of a banana that's been forgotten in a copy room at, at a school. And I will end with this. The forgotten banana. Perhaps I should feel sad knowing I've become a forgotten fruit left behind in the gathering darkness of the school copy room. There is solace to be found in the hum of the humidifier, the pulse-like clicks of these massive machines, savoring this rare spell of rest. It is a Friday, and beyond the walls of my epic loneliness, I wonder if anyone is still looking for me, nursing a sweet, gut-panged hankering for potassium after a long day of teaching and yearning. If someone does claim me, may they be a kind soul. Peel away my skin lovingly. Enjoy the life I've lived, a life destined not to be a forgotten thing, but something delicious, something good. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Fossil. Just hearing that makes you realize how much you miss being in person with people, reading beautiful words and sharing thoughts. And um, with God's help, we will be open really soon and doing that with all Chicago's bookstores. But thank you for our reminder how important it is to share literature and share thoughts and feelings and words with each other in public. Uh, Fossil's book is The Displaced Children of Displaced Children, so please keep an eye out for that. Order it from an indie bookstore, say one of the ones we've talked about today, or any of the nearly 200 that are around Chicagoland. Um, uh, Faisal, Faisal also mentioned um, City Lit, uh, which uh, passed, uh, passed out of business last uh, July or so, and Volumes, which is reorganizing, trying to uh, uh, get things going for another iteration down in Wicker Park. So we we uh, hope they do well and come back. Um, and just to we can realize that there have been some uh, there have been some business failures in the in the lockdown. Well, thank you, Fossil. That was great. Um, check the poll uh, numbers at the bottom of your screen. Uh, how many books have you purchased from Indy since the lockdown began? Uh, the winning answer is 10 plus. Uh, my answer is enough to open an annex, which uh, we'll be doing soon if, if the builder ever calls back, you know how that is. And uh, what is the first thing you will do when you visit your local bookstore safely? And the winning answer to that is buy a wheelbarrow full of books. Uh, only some stores are offering wheelbarrows. You might have to bring your own. So thank you for participating in that, everyone. Uh, from from Oak Park, we are going to move to Hyde Park uh, to the 
uh, legendary seminary co-op and 57th Street bookstores uh, down at 57th, down in the area of 57th and Woodlawn. Um, they are so busy today with their independent bookstore day. They, are, uh, they sent us a video to highlight their store. Uh, they're doing kind of a pop-up outside their store till three o'clock with coffee and mugs and merch and, uh, and snacks. So if you're in Hyde Park, get out. It's a beautiful day. Get out and support uh, 57th Street. Uh, it's actually in front of the co-op. Go out and support Seminary Co-op. Uh, and if Rich Kono could uh, line up that video, it would be, uh, it'd be good to move along with this. Um. Balloons, sidewalk chuck, umbrellas, tents, face paint. I'm just kidding. I don't know about face paint, but it's going to be a really um, exciting day. I think you'll... We are really excited for Independent Bookstore Day this year. Um, we have remained closed during the whole pandemic, and we are going to have our very first pop-up. Uh, we're going to um, set up some tables outside of the co-op on the front lawn, and we're going to sell um, a lot of different kinds of books and children's books and gift items and of course the independent bookstore day merchandise that we're really excited to have um, and we're gonna bring our browsing experience outside uh, to our community but nothing replaces the experience of having customers uh, in the store and, and browsing the stacks and looking through the books that we're excited to show them in person. Um, so this will bring that and I know that all of us booksellers are really excited for that and I also think that uh, the community will be really happy to be back among the books as well. for a party, like a party to celebrate your community bookstore. Um, I think a lot of us spend time throughout the year uh, thinking of ways to make what we do feel really special for the community. An independent bookstore day is like a national moment to pause and celebrate all of us who are, all of these stores that are so devoted to creating spaces in their community for, um, for looking at books and for discussing literature and things like that. It's a, it's a day to celebrate. It will be my first independent bookstore day that doesn't have like cupcakes or something to eat, but uh, we're still going to bring all the party supplies materials. The Seminary Co-op is uh, on the campus of the University of Chicago and it is a beautiful space that carries a deep backlist and it is like our product that we are so proud of is building a, is a completely unique browsing experience. So we carry books that you wouldn't find in a lot of other bookstores. We carry a lot of small presses and a lot of academic um, presses. And there are so many unique individual titles. a space that feels quiet and like devoted to these really fine books and to the people who want to get lost in the sex discovering those books. Fifty Seventh Street Books is our is also on the south side of Chicago. It's just a block away from the co-op, and it is our community, our greater community bookstore. It has an award-winning children's department. It has uh, 
also really carefully selected titles um, that we bring uh, in uh, lots of different genres, lots of mystery books and graphic novels and things like that. A really awesome cookbook section. Um, it Its purpose is to serve uh, the broader Southside community. Store day for our pop-up will be kind of combining both of those um, spaces and bringing them outside. We all know Seminary Bookshop. We've all been there at some time and thought, boy, I really should get a lot smarter. But, um, you know, we do what we can, right? Uh, and uh, finally, we'd like to go down to the south side. We are headed down south side to uh, visit Keith Lewis down at Bookies. Um, let me get my little note thing up here on the screen. Um, Bookies has grown through the years and now has two stores on the far south side, one in Beverly at 103rd and Western, and one in Homewood at 2015 Ridge Road. Keith taught high school English for 10 years in the Chicago public school system, then decided to take some time off to reassess his life. After a discussion with the uh, current owner or the present owner of the then owner of Bookies, Allison Pratt, Keith was convinced that his future involved running a community centric bookstore. Now, after eight years, Keith has one simple message, buy from local stores, quote, I just want your business. I want to provide you with books. So please welcome the fabulous Keith Lewis. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Bookies is, uh, I'm, I'm guessing I'm gonna have to take some people out for, for a tour because I don't, I don't know that anybody's ever been here that, that's out there right now. You have, you have, yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, it's, it's funny because uh, I once won an award for uh, being the best bookstore south of Hyde Park. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny because a lot of people and a lot of uh, like bookstore publications in Chicago. Uh, oh, nice. Thank you. Uh, somebody else said they've been here too. But uh, anyway, um, uh, yeah, it kind of, kind of shows that the, the South side doesn't end in Hyde Park and uh, it keep, it keeps on going. And I'm pretty much as far South and West as you can get and still be in the city. Um, so bookies has been around. It'll be 32 years old this year. It originally was, uh, thank you. Thank you. It just, it's uh, originally it was uh, um, around the corner from its current location. It was a tiny little 900 square foot place with brown carpet and particle board shelves, the kind of place that you'd walk in and, and say, oh, where's your, where are your Harlequin romances? And, and basically the answer would be, well, that half of the store over there was, was filled with them when I, when I took over. Um, very much looking like a used bookstore. Um, I am the third owner, a uh, little correction, Allison Platt is, is her name. There was an article printed a while ago with, a, with her name uh, misspelled. Um, but yeah, I took, I took over, actually, it was a little bit less than that. I took over uh, right at the end of 2014, beginning of 2015. So it's been about six years. Um, when I took it over, it became very, very uh, obvious that uh, that little store was not my dream. And so I packed up everything and built this uh, double storefront that, that you'll see soon. Um, um, and I think it was uh, July 1st, 2017 is when we opened here. And then I'm never satisfied. So I opened a second one uh, down in the South suburbs in Homewood. And, uh, you know, it, it was kind of, it was kind of sad though, because it's kind of a bookstore desert out here. I'm pretty much it for 10 miles in any direction down, down in Homewood. Um, before I opened the store down there, I was the only, I, I was the closest bookstore overall to, and, and it's like 10 miles due South of here where my, where my store is now. Um, got some pretty exciting things happening for uh, uh, independent bookstore today. We've got lots of giveaways here and I'll show that in a minute, but I've uh, um, got a few authors down in the Homewood store today. I didn't get, get it together enough to get a bunch of authors to come to the Chicago store. Maybe, maybe next time. But uh, um, so we had 
Uh, I'm not sure the timing of, of things right now, but uh, uh, Sahar Mustafa, the author of The Beauty of Your Face, um, she is a uh, Homewood Flossmore High School teacher. And so it made very much sense that she'd uh, come visit her local bookstore today. And uh, yeah, we've been carrying her books for, for quite some time now. Um, Jay Zawaski uh, is a sports guy and a radio guy. And he uh, um, wrote, wrote a book about the Blackhawks and he's signing books today. And um, uh, who else? Um, uh, ba Badia Ahad Lagardi is, is down there. She wrote a book called Afro Nostalgia, Feeling Good in Contemporary Black Culture. And she's been a great ally to the store since her book came out in, I believe, March. She's had to come in and sign more and more copies of, uh, of, her, of her book. But anyway, I'm going to mask up real quick and then uh, and, and show you guys the store because there's probably, even though a couple people did say they have been here. Oh, by the way, we, uh, this uh, um, shirt that I'm wearing right now, it was part of a fundraiser. That, that we did, we sold a whole bunch of uh, shirts uh, that some local artists designed. And it was, uh, it was a fantastic thing. And this is one of them by uh, Kristen Dobbins and uh, Nate Otto, who some of you may know from some of his, uh, um, some of his uh, um, murals around the city of Chicago. Um, and uh, yeah, Ooh, somebody was waving. I'm, I'm trying not to put people without permission on there. <laughs> Look, customers, we get customers. This is exciting. Um, ooh, my internet connection's unstable. I hope it's uh, not too bad. But this is, uh, it's look kind of backwards in, uh, in, in, in James's, uh, um, in, his, uh, in his image on there. But anyway, there's, uh, there's more. Hey, how are you? Oh my gosh. Look, this is somebody, this is, this is Carrie. She worked here for a very long time. She was the manager. She's wearing one of the, one of the, uh, oh, I can't quite do it right now, <laughs> but I can, I can help very soon. I'll be, I'm almost done. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you, she actually works for Sourcebooks now. Somehow I took her to a bunch of events and she ended up uh, working for another company. It's great. But uh, anyway. Quick tour of Chicago. Sorry, that was kind of running all over the place. And now I'm back. So anyway, quick whirlwind tour of bookies. I hope some of you make it down here sometime. It's a it's a nice store. I've done a lot with it. Um, and I and still it's still not my dream store though. So I'm still looking to do something else too. But uh, anyway, that Thanks, is all. Keith. That you. was great. I mean, that showed how what a um, what a community center a bookstore can be. Because suddenly you run into the former uh, employee and the neighbors and Beverly is a, a place like that. There's always, uh, there's such a, a, a neighborhood feel down in Beverly. Yeah, and Be Beverly and, uh, and Homewood very much remind me of each other. Um, they're, they're, they're very, very community focused and that's something that I love and that's something that's necessary. Um, some of the other people mentioned when they opened uh, back up again. We opened it again at the end of August. It was pretty dodgy while, while we were closed. Um, there were, I lost most of my employees for one reason or another. Uh, so I'm slowly building them up again. Um, but anyway, that's all. I guess I'm done. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. And I want this, I want that artwork off your wall. I love it. Oh, on the, the, the our logo? Yeah, on there. Oh, I love our logo. That's a great story how that was made. But uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you. I'm going to go help that customer. Actually, that's a good idea. Bookseller. Get going. Oh, excellent. I mean, it's busy. Isn't it great? It's a Saturday and the bookstore is busy and uh, people are going. We're going to we're going to get through this and we're going to do we're going to be fine. Can't wait to get to the other side. Um, so for our final uh, discussion today, we're going to bring in Roberta Rubin. Uh, Roberta is a primal force in Chicago letters, uh, a bookseller of nearly 40 years, uh, founder at the Chestnut Court Bookshop in Winnetka, which later grew into the bookstall. She was uh, instrumental in persuading New York publishers to send authors on tour to Chicago for readings at places like the Standard Club and the Union League Club. And she's also been a driving force in the establishment of the American Writers Museum on Michigan Avenue in Chicago, where she was uh, recognized for her hard work 
and largesse by having the Roberta Rubin Room named after her. So please welcome Roberta. <laughs> well, thank you, Jim. It's so nice to be here, to be included. Uh, I do have to talk to Fazl for just a minute. Something that hung in my office for almost 30 years was Mary Oliver's poem. No poet ever wrote to dishonor life. And oh, I man. love that too. I have the bland just like you had, and it was right by my desk. So thank you for reading it this morning and for being here. Uh, I'm very delighted to share this moment with other booksellers. Uh, I was very fortunate in 2013 when I went to sell my store that I found a wonderful bookseller woman in Winnetka who now has been running the store for seven years. Her name is Stephanie Hochschild, and the bookstall at Chestnut Court is still open and very busy. So that is very gratifying to me as well. But then to see meet all the other booksellers today, that's very exciting. Um, after owning the store for 32 years, and then uh, I didn't have to work during the pandemic, but I certainly had to fight some of the big guys that were there. And when Amazon came in, I went down to Springfield twice to get to talk to the legislators to please change the rule about not charging tax, that Amazon could uh, save 10% on their sales by not charging tax. So I was a fighter in my day too. Um, within the past two years, I have joined after, well, I first was, the timing was perfect. I was there when the American Writers Museum started and they chose Chicago, the center of the country to uh, open a museum. There was no such thing in this country uh, and the founder, Malcolm O'Hagan, came from Sligo, Ireland, and Dublin, where they had three writers' museums, Amer uh, Irish writers' museums. And he said, where's yours? So we have one here in Chicago, 180 North Michigan Avenue. We have a Chicago room with several of our inductees into the Hall of Fame that are highlighted. Uh, but it's worth a stop, a visit for those who haven't been able to be there. And um, I'd love to show you around even, <laughs> but there's plenty of uh, ways that you can work with the museum. Uh, then two years ago, Don Evans tapped me to be part of this wonderful Chicago Literary Hall of Fame. And uh, I would just like to applaud them. I think they work well with bookstores. Uh, and I was lucky that I've met so many authors because my store had authors almost every day of the year in the last 10 years. And so I was very lucky to know a lot of Chicago authors. So bravo. And uh, I'll take some questions or whatever, Jim, you want me to do. Uh, we talked earlier about um, how you say in, in the years you, you ran the bookstall, you got uh, attention from New York to actually get authors here to, uh, to tour and actually stop in Chicago because if it's not New York, Boston or DC, you know, it doesn't count. So how, how did that, um, how, how do you think that uh, helps the growth of Chicago bookstores or well, our, our presence on the, in the map? Okay. In the early 80s, I met a woman who had run, who had owned Chestnut Court Bookshop before the owner that I bought it from. And she would invite me over from some, for some scotch at five o'clock. And she'd say, now, Roberta, you have to go to New York. You have to go to the Algonquin and rent a room there. And Bennett Cerf will come and Robert Bernstein, oh, sure. Well, that, that part of it didn't work, but I went to New York. And I went at least five or six times a year. I eventually took Denny Cummings from the Union League Club and Mary Holloway from the University Club. And we all went to ask for authors. And there were a few other booksellers, one couple out in California, one RJ Julia in Madison, Connecticut. And uh, we went to New York and said, in order to sell your books, we have to have the author, or we would like to have the authors, not we have to. And that happened in the late 80s. 
Uh, and uh, I think that really helped. I'll never forget, I had uh, Catherine Graham from the Washington Post one time for breakfast. And a woman held up her hand and said, you're so important. Why are you doing this? Why are you going out and talking about your book? And she said, because nobody will read it unless they listen to me or I'm able to hand it to them or they can shake my hand. And so she understood and eventually the industry understood. Do you have any great uh, stories from the bookstall when you had a, a book <laughs> author for promotion? Did anyone show up drunk or in a fire truck or anything? <laughs> oh, I have a couple who didn't show up, but uh, no. One of my favorite stories is Larry McMurtry who just died Yeah, and he came and somebody raised their hand and said, what did you think of the television production of Lonesome Dove? And in a dry, droll voice, he said, I never saw it. And the man said, oh, no, no, I'm asking, you know, you're a big Lonesome Dove. You were the screenwriter. He said, yes. He said, but that was as far as I'd go. I'm, so he was one of my <laughs> dollar authors. Uh, Lauren Bacall was not an author. She was a celebrity, but she didn't like the water and she didn't like the shaky table and she didn't like so. But otherwise, I really have to say authors are wonderful. Book people are wonderful. We, I'm always asked, how come everybody in the book industry is so nice? And I really think <laughs> we are. I agree. I mean, I, when I had a book and I toured for it, um, it's just a great time. And, and if you're lucky, you know, a bad night is when you have five people show up for your book. And a great <laughs> night is when you get 100 and all the nice booksellers and they're giving you T-shirts. I, I, my my T-shirt collection kind of, they actually wore, they eventually wore out. You know, I had mm -hmm. them for many, many years, but it, there's, there's just no better time to meet people and say, you know, don't you love books? Don't you love stories? And um, right. the nicest people. Right. I agree. Sometimes they'd say, well, why do you think? And I'd say, well, there's not a lot of money in it. <laughs> <laughs> but we enjoy our uh, conversation and our connection. It's a charmed life, James. It really is. It is. To be a and bookseller you... and an author. And uh, what do you think for the Chicago Literary Hall of Fame going forward? What do you see on the horizon? Oh, I see great success. I'm a great fan of Don Evans and the group. Uh, and there, we're advertising, we're making inroads, uh, reaching out to authors and writers and young people. Um, I see forward thinking. Excellent, excellent, thank you. And thank you for everybody who uh, joined us this morning. That was a terrific, a terrific meeting. Look what, look what is happening today, even if we can't meet together for Independent Bookstore Day. We are going to get through this the bookstores are gonna survive if we support them and tell our friends to support them. And the, uh, the unique and vibrant Chicago literary scene that we enjoy is going to come back. So uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank Don and the Literary Hall of Fame for uh, arranging this. Thanks to Rich Kono for doing the tech work behind the scenes. Um, so uh, I'll leave you people to your Saturdays, but Jim, really quickly, uh, Randy, Randy Alberts, our the Chicago Literary Hall of Fame uh, board president, he has yes. raised his hand. So Rich Kono, do you think you can shoot to Randy really quickly? Uh, Randy, we're right at noon, but if we uh, you've got a question, you can ask it. If Rich can do that, there's Randy. I don't see me. Okay, I got to do this. Hey, Randy, here oh, we are. There we go. Okay, I didn't have a question. I was just trying to clap. But I, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I want to thank everybody who participated today. We had a, this is a great event. Uh, Jim, thanks so much for hosting all of us today. You did a wonderful job. And uh, to Don for putting it all together. And uh, wow, it's great to uh, get into some of these bookstores. I have to get down to see uh, see bookies. That's a looks like a pretty great place. Uh, field trip. What's that? Field trip. Field trip. Field yeah. trip. Hey, Randy, you and I should go together. We should do like an Oak Park to Beverly all, all for all for and, and back yeah. trip. That would be great. All for get it. a rainbow cone and go. <laughs>
Yeah, terrific. Thanks so much. Looks like we had a comment there from a viewer who came in from Saudi Arabia. So we have reached the other side of the world tonight. Good job, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Get out there and buy books. So long.